We're starting a new series next. The program you're about to watch is part of a free audio series we are making available to you as a gift from Greg Fritz Ministries, entitled Eternal Life Versus Living Forever. Visit gregfritz.org to download the MP3s for free by entering code LIFE22 at checkout. Are you tired of hearing bad news? Tune into the good news of the gospel. Welcome to Good News with Greg Fritz. Hello, I'm Greg Fritz. Welcome to the Good News program. We're going to start a new series today that I'm going to call Eternal Life. And there is a lot in this. This is a very, uh, it, it became bigger than I thought it would as I studied. And uh, there's just a lot of angles that we're going to take by talking about eternal life. And we're not offering it uh, the streaming video this time, but what we are offering is a, is a brand new uh, series, an audio series called Eternal Life Versus Living Forever. And we'll give you this series as a free download. If you go to my website, look for the audio series. It's four messages. And if you'll enter the code LIFE22 uh, at checkout, you can get that free of charge. And we are doing the study notes. We're calling them Eternal Life Versus Living Forever. So you want to go look for these uh, on the home page and you can have the study notes and the audio series free of charge. Uh, we'd love for you to get that. This series, I, I just believe there's, as I said, a lot of angles, but we need to be aware of eternity right now. And uh, I think it's important to think about these things. We're going to talk about eternal life. We're going to talk about what it is to live forever. We're going to talk about death and, uh, and the afterlife. We're going to talk about the judgment. Uh, so there's just a lot involved in this series, but let me start it with this statement. Uh, everyone lives forever, but not everyone has eternal life. And it's important that we know the difference. And by the time we get done with this series, I think you'll know the difference in, uh, in many, many ways uh, that there's a difference between having eternal life and living forever. Uh, I want to take you, first of all, to Ephesians 1. And if I could say this, I, this teaching really means a lot to me. It, it's done a lot for me. There's a lot of meat or high octane uh, power in this teaching. It's, it's, there's revelation here. Just to know and understand what is in you, what God has done in you is, is life changing. It's beneficial and I can prove it. Uh, Ephesians 1 and verse 18, this is Paul's prayer for the Ephesians and it includes us. He says in verse 18, that the eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that you may know what is the hope of your calling or his calling, what are the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints, and what is the exceeding greatness of his power toward us who believe, according to the working of his mighty power, which he worked in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly places. So he's praying for the church for us to have revelation and to understand some things. He wanted us to understand three things here. The hope of his calling, that's what you're called to. What does the, the future hold? Why are we living the way we live? Um, and, and do we have anything to look forward to by living for God? And then what are the riches of the glory of his inheritance? That means what do you have now in Christ? But look at number 3, verse 19. He wants us to know what is the exceeding greatness of his power. And in the New King James it says, toward us who believe. But this power is the same power that raised Christ from the dead. And he's saying that power is working in you. Well, can I say that power is eternal life? It's the life of God that has been imparted to your spirit. And Paul said he wants us to understand the exceeding greatness of this power. So we're going to look at that during this uh, series. And I think it's going to do for you what it's done for me. It is encouraging. It's edifying. It puts meat on your bones, spiritually speaking. Um, and so I think you're going to enjoy it. Let me give you this same verse uh, in, in the Amplified Version, and it makes it just a little more clear. He says, Having the eyes of your heart flooded with light so that you can know and understand the hope to which He's called you, and how rich his glorious inheritance in the saints, his set apart ones. And here's the verse, 19. And so that you can know and understand what is the immeasurable and unlimited 
and surpassing greatness of his power in and for us who believe as demonstrated in the working of his mighty strength when he, which he exerted in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his own right hand in heavenly places. So uh, this is uh, describing what's happened in us perfectly. Let me read it again. What is the immeasurable and unlimited and surpassing greatness of his power in and for us. So there is a power in you. You may not be aware of it, but it's there. And uh, Paul said it's important for us to know this, to understand this, to, to uh, have a, a revelation, to be flooded with light. And, and so I, I just encourage you in, in to sit back, listen to this teaching, let it register on your heart, and be glad today. You know, there are a lot of Christians praying for power. They're asking God to do more and give them more power, and, and they don't realize that the same power that raised Christ from the dead dwells in them right now. Uh, you know, you don't have to feel it for it to be there. And, when, and that, this is the thing about spiritual things. It's why we need revelation. He was praying for revelation for the saints because spiritual things are invisible, to the natural eyes and spiritual things are many times can't be felt. Now, I love to feel God as much as anyone, but I'd rather believe something after studying the Bible and learning the things that we've learned. I'd rather believe something than feel something because the things we believe, the things that we see that cannot be seen, when we look at things that can't be seen, when we're aware of things that aren't perceived by the senses, those things are more real. So the things we believe are more real than the things we see. The, the things that we know in, in Christ and receive from the Bible by revelation are more real. They're eternal. They're not temporal. So just because you can't feel the power of God in you doesn't mean that it's not there. And we have to go with the Word of God. That's why you need a revelation. Let me read this from uh, another translation. This is the WNT translation it says the eyes of your understanding being enlightened so that you may know what is the hope uh, which he has called you to that you may know what is the hope which his call to you inspires what the wealth of the glory of his inheritance in God's people and you know we could spend we could do a, a series on each one of these first of all the hope to which he's called you second of all the wealth of the glory of his inheritance in God's people. That's what you have and who you are in Christ. But thirdly, the tr what the transcendent greatness of His power in us believers as seen in the working of His infinite might when He displayed it in Christ by raising Him from the dead and seating Him at His own right hand in the heavenly realm. So what, what the transcendent greatness of His power in us believers we need to know that there is transcendent great power in you right now if you're a believer. And, uh, you know, we've s said this many times. Most of what I teach is, is directed to Christians. And so if you're a Christian, the same power that raised Christ from the dead dwells in you. And God calls this, especially in the Gospel of John, and in the letters that John wrote, the Apostle John, he calls this eternal life. It's the life of God, and it's in you. It's not going to be in you. It doesn't come and go. It's in you right now, and it's powerful and helpful to reckon that. You know, there's, that's why it says 1 John 4, 4, we're familiar with that, but greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. Uh, God lives in you. His life is in you. His resurrection power is in you. And uh, this, is, this is very encouraging and positive, and it brings edification and strength to your life when you reckon these things are so. <clears throat> Many times what we need to do is just reckon that it's so. I mean, declare that it's so. Decide that it's so. Make the decision that I'm not going to call myself weak or or I'm not going to call myself a failure because God's life is in me. His great power is at work in me, in my life. So um, Ephesians 2.5, and I want to read several different translations of this, describes this accurately and perfectly. Um, and I'm going to have to go down to the end of my notes. 
you need to get these notes. They are extensive. And um, man, we get, we're get we getting calls and, and, and emails about our study notes. People are do, using them for home Bible studies. I love that. They're going through and they're, they're using this as their outline. And uh, we did so much work on these. I'm glad people are using them. But uh, this is a series that you will want to get. And you can teach this. And, and I, I encourage you, you, some of these things, you just have to let them percolate. You know, it's not going to knock you off your seat probably, but as you allow these words to, like Jesus said, sink down deep into your ears, it, 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 it changes the way you see yourself. It changes the way you think about yourself. Uh, Ephesians 2, 5, again in the New King, uh, King James says, Even when we were dead in sins, made us alive together with Christ, by grace you've been saved. And then the Good News Bible says um, that while we were spiritually dead in our disobedience, He brought us to life with Christ. And uh, another one says, who, He was moved by the intense love with which He loved us, and He made us alive with the life of Christ. That means the same life that's in Jesus is in you. The same resurrection power that went into Him, that raised Him from the dead, is in you now. You say, well, that's going to happen at my resurrection. No, it happened when you were born again. God put his life in you. He made you alive spiritually. And, and it hasn't happened yet to our bodies. That's why we deal with physical challenges. But in our spirit, we are just like Jesus. We've received that same life. Um, and I uh, in, in the Amplified, it says, He gave us the very life of Christ Himself, the same new life with which He quickened Him. And another one says, Even when in trespasses we lay dead, He thrilled us with the same new life wherewith He quickened our Messiah. And I like this one. It's Knox translation. It says, Our sins had made dead men of us. We're going to talk about death. Uh, we, weren't, we aren't dead physically, but spiritually we were dead. Our sins made dead men of us. And He, in giving life to Christ, gave life to us too. Another one says He has called us to share the life of Christ. And then this is my favorite. This is a paraphrase. It's Jordan's paraphrase. It says, God, in His overflowing sympathy and great love, breathed the same new life into us as into Christ. I love to think about that. God breathed the same new life into us as He breathed into Christ. If you could imagine what happened when Jesus was raised from the dead, that's the same thing that happened to you uh, when you were born again, and even though you didn't feel it. And that's the biggest, you know, uh, and that's why faith is so important in the kingdom of God. That's what I dealt with. When you get born again, it's such a radical change. You go from darkness to light, from death to life. God raises you literally from the dead. And, and sometimes we're not aware of that. We don't have a lot of emotions to go with that. We don't have the feelings that would cor correspond with the radical nature of the new birth. But that doesn't mean it didn't happen. That doesn't mean it's not real. We have been changed completely by the power of God. And uh, man, thank God for it. I want to pray that you have a revelation, that the eyes of your spirit are enlightened, that you would know not only the hope of His calling, the riches of the glory of His inheritance, but what is the greatness of God's power at work in you right now because you're a Christian. And, uh, you know, again, we don't have to make this happen. We don't have to try to make it so. It is so. All we need to do is just sit back and reckon it. And, uh, and so I'm, I'm going to design these teachings to renew your mind. To, to, I'm going to help you renew your mind. I'm going to help you begin to uh, meditate and see these things in a fresh and a new way. And I believe it's going to bring, bring strength to your life. I believe it's going to bring confidence to your life that maybe you've never had before. So uh, in this series, Eternal Life versus Living Forever, we began with this statement, Everyone lives forever. So, so don't get that confused. Uh, when, when you receive eternal life from God according to the Scriptures, that doesn't just mean that now I'm going to live forever. No, you're going to live forever whether you receive eternal life or not. They are not the same thing. There's a difference 
between living forever and receiving eternal life. In fact, the end of this life, physically speaking, is just the beginning of eternity for every person. And every person is going, to, is going to have this experience where they're going to pass out of their body. Their body's either going to be changed or it's going to die and their spirit is going to leave. But make no mistake about it, all of us are going to live forever. And that's, uh, that's already established and there's nothing we can do about it. So these people that say, you know, when we die, we're just going to go back into the into the cosmos, this, this, this big consciousness, uh, whatever they say. I mean, people twist things and make, they make up the strangest and the wildest scenarios. But the fact is, you're a human being created by God who is an eternal spirit, and you have an eternal spirit, and you're going to live forever. The world actually has it backwards, and this is why they're, 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 well, their, their motives are so messed up and their view is so messed up. The world sees it this way, that, that humans are going to die and pass out of existence and the world itself is going to last forever. That the earth, now we have to save the planet because it's going to have to last forever. So all the resources and everything on the earth needs to last for future generations forever and ever and ever. That's just the opposite of reality. The reality is that human life does not end when the body dies. It goes on forever and the earth is going to end. The earth is what's temporary. It's going to be folded up like a garment and thrown away. Then God's going to create another one. Well, you can see that if, if in your mind you think that life is over when your body dies, that you pass out of existence, and that the planet is what's going to last forever, then you'd be out trying to save the planet instead of saving souls. And that's exactly what we see in the world. They're trying to save the planet, save the resources. Now, I do believe in being a good steward. I don't think we should trash the planet. I'm not advocating that. I think we should live clean. You know, I got an electric golf cart. Um, it's clean, it's green. And I love it. I go all over the place in that golf cart. Um, but I did it because <laughs> I wanted a golf cart. <laughs> I really wasn't trying to save the planet. I don't mind pitching in when it's convenient. But um, I enjoy, I, I, I don't mind having an electric car maybe someday. And, and so I'm not against any of that. You know, I, I don't think we should feel like we're so opposed and we're fighting each other all the time. Uh, who wants dirty water and dirty air? I don't want that. But at the same time, I realize there's something more important than the planet and its souls because everyone lives forever. So, uh, and, and if the planet is temporary, then it doesn't have to last forever. And if God, our Father, made this planet, and He did, and God made it with the foreknowledge that He has because He does, then He put enough air and enough water and enough resources here to sustain human life until we're finished, until we're done with it. And, and that takes a lot of pressure off. And that's not being irresponsible. It's just seeing things the way they are. Um, as I said, if, if we believed that life ended when the body died, we would live life differently. In fact, even Paul said that he would live life differently. Uh, this may surprise you, but this is the, coming from one of the holiest, most committed men in the history of the church. And he said this. He said, uh, if the dead don't rise, this is 1 Corinthians 15, 32. He said, if the dead don't rise, then let us eat and drink for tomorrow we die. <laughs> Isn't that powerful? I mean, even Paul said, you know, they have a point. <laughs> All these people running around partying and, thro and throwing their life away. He, he said, if, if we didn't rise from the dead, I'd be right there with them. There, there's no reason to prepare for anything other than what kind of pleasure and joy can I get out of my life today if there's no hereafter. If life ends when, when we have our funeral, then what's the point? In fact, he went on to say this in 1 Corinthians 15, 16. He said, if the dead do not rise then Christ is not risen. And if Christ is not risen, your faith is futile and you're still in your sins. 
then also those who have fallen asleep in Christ have perished. He's saying if there's no resurrection, then everyone that every Christian that died is gone. They're just gone. And, and he said this, if in this life only we have hope in Christ, we are of all men most pitiable. That, that is quite a statement. You know, I've said this before. I've said, you know, if I had a thousand lives to live, I'd live every one of them for God. I wouldn't take one life and trade it for the world to see what that's like. I want to live every life for God. And that's in view of eternity, of course. But Paul is saying, if this is all there is, and if life is over, when you die, when your body dies, then we are to be pitied. <laughs> you know, because he, especially Paul, you know, he gave up everything. I don't think he had a home. He didn't have a family. And he, he was beaten and persecuted. He didn't really, you know, I don't know that he owned much. He worked with his hands to provide for himself. And he's saying, man, I'm not doing all this so I can die and pass out of existence. I'm doing this because I have the hope of, of eternity in my heart. I know that heaven is in my future. And boy, and you take that out, and, and a lot of us Christians, we can't even imagine a world where you, you uh, 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 of theology that's minus God, which is not impossible. Theology means your belief in God. But if you were, had a philosophy that eliminated God and eliminated the hereafter, eliminated life after death, eliminated the resurrection of Jesus, eliminated the gospel, what, needed, what, what use is the gospel? If, if this is all there is, we can't even imagine living in a world like that. And yet, the majority of our world, and the majority of people that are running our world believe that way. And it's, that's astounding. Uh, when you take Christ out of the equation, you take God out of the equation, and you take life after death out of the equation, there's just not much to live for. And, and I think that's one reason these people grab on to saving the planet. They want to do something, you know, with their life because we were created for purpose. And, you know, I said this one time before I wrote this down, but, but you know, how, when you, how can life have meaning if the origin of life was an accident. You know, you can't just go along now and add meaning to it. If it was an accident, like they say, and it's the result of some cosmic explosion and evolution from a single cell, I mean, that has no meaning. There's no purpose in that. So it's impossible now, 6,000 years down the road, or whatever they think it is, billions and billions and billions of years down the road, you can't add purpose now. No, the, the, the world itself had purpose. Creation had a purpose behind it. There's a reason that we're here. There's something to do while we're here. Life is meant to have meaning. And, and, and when you take away life after death, you remove almost all meaning. Almost all meaning. And, and you, you, you focus on trees and, 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 you know, tadpoles and spotted owls and you're trying to save things you know that that you know that are that are in this world worshiping the creature rather than the creator and it leads to confusion and darkness in fact i did a whole teaching on it the meaning of life but when people remove god from their philosophy from their from their world view it opens the door to a flood of sin and immorality uh, b because the vacuum has to be filled with something so even Paul said, man, if there's no life after death, there's really no reason to, to do anything. There's no reason to try. You know, it'd be like going to school and there's no graduation. There's no promotion. There's no test. There's no way to go beyond it. You're just in school. Just You're supposed to study and do your homework and you're supposed to work hard. But there's no graduation. There's no promotion. There's no reward. There's nothing after that. It's just an endless... It's just an endless life of, of studying and doing tests and doing homework and there's no reward. 
what's the point? I'd quit school if that were the case. I wanted to qu quit school anyway, but that's another story. But but the point is, it, when you when you remove rewards and and the life hereafter, the hope of his calling, when you remove that. Uh, there's not much left to live for. The truth is that, that God breathed into Adam the breath of life. And when he did that, God's an eternal spirit. He's an eternal being. And when he breathed into Adam the breath of life, he made Adam and all of his descendants eternal beings. It began then and it will never end. So even though we didn't always exist, we will always exist. So maybe we had a beginning, but we will have no end. We will live forever, and that's something that is important to uh, to understand and to and to come to grips with because um, that means life matters. What you do matters. What you think matters. What you do for others, it all matters. I, I'm glad we live in a world like that, aren't you? I'm glad I can do something with my life that counts, and I can literally lay up treasure in heaven. Jesus said, "I can be rich toward God." Jesus said. I can do things now that will have eternal consequences. I'm glad uh, that that happened. You know, uh, one year in high school, I won the geometry award, and it's probably because no one else tried. I don't know, or maybe I'm just weird enough that geometry made sense to me. And so, um, you know, I worked pretty hard that year on geometry, and at the end of the year, they were giving out the awards, and I won. I won an award. And as I was getting that award, I, I realized, you know, I started at the beginning of this year striving to be good in this class, and it paid off. What good would it do if my classmates had said, I want one of those? Hey, hey, wait a minute. What, what award do I get? Well, you didn't pay attention. You didn't do your homework. You didn't try. And now that it's all over with, there's, there's no way to go back and redo it. You're not going to get the geometry award I got it it's too late now for you to get that award now you can try to get a different one you can try again next year but this one it's too late I'm glad we live in a, in a world where we can actually do something that matters and and I'm not saying that we're earning the love of God or salvation or anything like that but once you get saved you can begin then to look forward to eternity and do things that will last forever and uh, you know your faith that's tried by fire it's more precious than gold that perishes so even when you believe God for things stand on the Word of God when you're challenged in life those things are gonna be remembered in eternity I'm glad there's life after death aren't you well we've um, run out of time get the the audio series get the whole teaching on this it's on our website Go look for this and uh, download it as my free gift to you. Don't miss the next uh, sessions. We're going we're gonna to fill this out. It's going to be great. You're going to love it. Until then, remember this. The good news is so good, the bad news doesn't matter. Everyone lives forever, but not everyone has eternal life. This knowledge is life-changing. In this powerful series, you'll learn what eternal life is, what it does, and how to get it. Call our helpline at 918-749-7744 Monday through Friday from 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. Central Time.